Hey, good afternoon, folks. Buck Risby here. How are you? Um, I am super stoked about the, the call that we have here, and I, I don't know where that picture came from, <laughs> that's fine. If, if that's on your screen right now, um, but that, <laughs> God, that, that young man. That is the most shade. professional photo of you online. We specifically you, chose that one for that reason. Thank you so much. There are pictures of me with suits and, and a clean shaven face uh, running around somewhere, but that was not the one that was selected <laughs> for this presentation. So um, I'm, I'm really excited to be here with my good friend, Ryan Levesque. And um, the reason why I uh, agreed to get the word out about this workshop is because literally Ryan and I just got off a call where we get together weekly with our team at Real Dose Nutrition, and Ryan is one of our top gun uh, marketing consultants for our firm. And we're working with him on some really exciting proprietary uh, technology and approaches that he's put together in helping companies like Real Dose Nutrition uh, take a very different approach to uh, putting ads out, getting people interested in what you, uh, you know, your products and services, engaging them, and then converting them into you know, rapidly loyal customers. And uh, we're we're kind of in the early early going. Just blown away at uh, how far we've come and what we've accomplished. So I'm not going to steal any thunder in terms of what's been happening there because he's going to get into the details of why it works, why it's so important, and why you should apply what he's going to teach you in this workshop to your business. So um, Ryan is, uh, I've got, I think we met for the first time at the, um, uh, I want to say the Titans event uh, that was held. That was the first time where we met in person, yeah, and we had, yeah. we had a relationship from afar as it's so typical in our industry for um, many, many months before that. Exactly, and uh, you know, we were actually, you know, Ryan put together a great dinner, and I was, I was amazed at the caliber of folks that were at the dinner. I, I didn't feel like I belonged. Jay Abraham was there, a, 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 a Brian Kurtz, a number of other luminaries in the direct response space were there at, at Ryan's request because they also uh, know that he's, he's a rock star when it comes to these kinds of things. And, and you're also working with some pretty, pretty big companies. Uh, not not just in the direct response space, but in in other industries as well. So I'm going to get out of the way because you have a lot to learn. I'm hoping that you brought your you're here with bells on. You brought your your uh, notepads. You're taking a lot of notes. Uh, we're going to um, I'm going to be asking questions because even though Ryan is a is a consultant for my business, uh, I, al I I always have a lot to learn. I'm always looking for the slight edge. So Ryan, take it away, sir. Awesome. Buck, thank you so much for the uh, warm introduction, my man. I'm really excited to be here and, and really excited to, to be sharing this with, with uh, you on the call. Uh, not just you, Buck, but you as a, a, you know, a, a participant in this. And this will be something um, that you will be participating in. It'll be, um, we're going to keep this fun and interactive. Before we dive right in, though, can you just do me a favor? Can you just go to the GoToWebinar chat and just let me know that my audio is okay? I'm on a wireless headset, and I just want to make sure that there's no interference, that you can hear me just fine. Um, if you could just actually type in the chat and just say, hey, yep, hear you loud and clear. Um, okay, David says yes. Joe says good. John says sound good. Awesome. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Jim says cool. Lynn says cool. Um, Raheem, Ed, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, really, really appreciate it. So what we're going to be talking about today is uh, the weird ask formula or survey formula that I've used and my team has used to generate over 3 million leads, 200,000 customers across 23 markets, and generate over $100 million in online revenue. And what's interesting about these numbers is that as, as crazy as these numbers might sound, they're actually understated. I had to take inventory across all the markets that we're in right now as we speak at the amount of volume that we're doing using the exact methodology that you are about to discover. And believe it or not, but we're generating between 50 and 65,000 leads per day across all the markets. And at 50,000 leads a day, my numbers might be off, but just roughly over the course of the year, that's about 19 million leads. And we're doing that profitably. So that gives you a sense for the type of opportunity that's there. And what's most exciting about this is I'm going to focus specifically on how this applies to health 
related companies. So if you are a trainer and you have a, a training business, if you are a health coach, if you are a physician and you're looking to build an online business, if you are a supplement company owner or you're an aspiring supplement company owner, what I'm really excited about is the fact that this model lends itself especially well to your industry. And you'll see some of the results that I'm about to show you. And the reason why is because this is largely about diagnosing and prescribing, which fits that medical paradigm to a T. Now, before we dive right in and cover all the good stuff, there are a few things that I like to do. Whenever I'm attending an online training workshop myself, the first question that I'm always asking myself is, is this something that I can use in my business? So is this something that can work for me? So to answer the question, who is this for? If you're launching a new business, a new product, whether it's a new supplement line or a new coaching program, or you've got a new project that you're looking to kick off, if you have an existing business but you struggle to make cold traffic work, and what I mean by cold traffic is Facebook traffic in a way that's both compliant, meaning that you're allowed to advertise, and scale, which if you're in the health business you know is a little bit of a challenge, whether that's Google AdWords traffic, whether that's Yahoo in-stream advertising, whether that's YouTube video ads, whether that's Twitter ads, whether that's Instagram. I know some people in the health space that do over $15,000 a day just on Instagram traffic alone. And it doesn't matter what traffic source that we're talking about. This is something that you can use and that we do use to make cold traffic convert. If you're tired of having to rely on joint venture traffic, so what I mean by that is having to rely on affiliates and having to beg people to promote you and say, hey, will you promote me, please? If you're tired of having to rely on that, if you're tired of having to rely on internal launches, so constantly going back to your existing list and having to sell more and more stuff to those people and burn out that list, or if you simply want a proven evergreen funnel, meaning something that you can build once, set it, and then forget it, meaning something that can last months and months and in some cases years and years, or if you work with businesses and have clients in any of those situations, particularly in the health space. What I'm going to do is show you what I consider to be the holy grail of online marketing, which is how to convert cold traffic into customers. Now, I get it. This sounds great, but the question is, how are you going to do all this? How are you going to convert cold traffic into customers? How are you going to find that holy grail of online health marketing? And you're going to do it by doing this. You're going to use what I have in front of you here, which is something that has come to be known as the survey funnel formula. Okay. Now, because our time is limited and because I want to be able to go deep, I want to be able to take you through some specific things that you're going to be able to actually take notes on and I strongly advise you to have a notebook and a pen, have everything else that you might be working on closed because I talk fast and I move fast. And we're going to be covering a lot. I strongly suggest that you have your finger on the screen capture version uh, button on your keyboard so you can grab screen captures where appropriate, maybe start an Evernote or a document where you're grabbing some of this stuff because we're going to be covering a lot. Now, because I want to go deep and because our time is limited and because we don't have time to cover everything that you see here on this page, what we're going to do is I'm going to focus on three of the highest leverage aspects of this formula, which you see in these three red boxes here. Now, whenever I've done this in the past, people have always asked, but hey, Ryan, is there any way that you could go back so I could copy down this? flowchart? Well, here's what I want to do. If you are interested, okay, and if enough people are interested, this is what I'm going to do. If you would like a high-resolution copy of this flowchart so you can read all the fine print, you can save it, download it, you can print it up at Kinko's, you can make it the background on your monitor if you want, um, what I'll do is this. If enough people are interested, I will make a way available at the end of this presentation to get yourself a copy of this. If you are interested, do this right now. In the chat, say, yes, Ryan, I want this. I want the flowchart. I'd like a copy of it. Yes, please, I'd like a copy of the flowchart. And my assistant, Megan, who's on the call with us, I'm just going to ask her to tally up the number of people. And if enough people are interested, uh, uh, remind me, and we'll make a way uh, for you to get access to this at the end of this call. Just looking to make sure people can see theirs. Uh, oh, cool. Um, oh my gosh, wow. Um, 
Mike saying yes, June yes, Ed yes, Tyler yes, Gabriel, Joseph yes, yes, Lynn yes, Cindy yes, Raheem, Mike, Tyler, Thomas, Irby, David, Francine, oh wow, okay, Dr. Dan, Curtis, okay, cool. Um, uh, it's actually quite a few people, holy moly. Um, wow, okay, so people are just going through. So, uh, Megan, just take a count on how many um, people, and if there are enough, we'll make sure we make avail a way available. So going back to the concept of converting cold traffic in scale for health business online, how do you do this? What is the secret? Well, the secret is actually deceptively simple. You're going to ask people what they want, but you're going to do it in a counterintuitive, indirect way. Now, what you see in front of you here is our book, Ask, um, which tells the story of how I developed this methodology and how we went from starting in a tiny, obscure market and then replicating this process in over 23 different markets to generate well over $100 million in online sales. Now, whenever I talk about the concept of asking people what they want, inevitably someone says, well, you can't ask people what they want. And inevitably there's someone that brings up a quote that's attributed to Henry Ford that says, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have told me faster horses. And I'll have some people that'll bring up a quote that's attributed to Steve Jobs, and I'm paraphrasing, that is to the tune of, you can't ask people what they want. Focus groups, for example, are worthless. People don't know what they want until they've seen it. It's something that Jobs has famously said. Now, the reason why those quotes, and there are many more, and those are just two examples, one from 100 years ago and one from a few years ago, the reason why those quotes ring true for so many people is because they are true. You see, and this is the catch-22. You cannot ask people what they want because people don't know what they want. What you have to do is ask the right questions at the right time in the right context to the right people to indirectly determine what it is that people want and not what they think they want, not what they say they want, not what you think they want, but what they really want, and what they really want to buy from you specifically. So when you ask yourself, well, why aren't marketers who use surveys in their business getting the type of results that we talked about, over $100 million in online sales? Well, the reason is simple. The reason is because most marketers use surveys completely wrong. Now, with this as the backdrop for what we're going to cover when we get into the meat and potatoes, I want to answer the second question that I'm always asking myself whenever I attend an online training workshop, which is, should I pay attention to the guy or girl who's delivering the training? Is this someone that I should give my attention? Should I trust this person? Do I believe this person? So I know most people on this call, because I'm not someone who's deep in the health space like Buck is. I'm not someone who spent the last... 30 years of my career specifically in the health space. You might not know who I am. So I think it's only fair that I briefly introduce who I am, my brief background, how we got to where we are today, so that you can make the decision. Is this something that you should pay attention to? Is this something that has a place in your business or not? So my name is Ryan Levesque. People know me as the Funnel Specialist. In fact, that's the name of our company, Funnel Specialist. And that's what we do all day, every day, is build funnels using the exact methodology that you're about to get your hands on. And by funnel specialists, like we talked about, what I mean is 3 million leads, 200,000 customers, 23 markets, $100 million in revenue. There was an article that just came out today in Business Insider that tells the story of how I left a career on Wall Street, um, basically lost everything, and went from earning $500 a month with my wife to building uh, a business that earns over $5 million a year in just a short amount of time, using exactly what I'm about to get your hands on, uh, what you're about to get your hands on. And it's an article that actually just came out today, interestingly enough. Now, by funnel specialist, what I mean is uh, the clients and partners that I work with, and typically uh, it's a partnership arrangement in the same way that uh, Buck and Buck's company and I are working together um, in, to scale what we're doing together in a very massive way. Um, some of the businesses include the number one golf instruction site in the world, the number one tennis instruction site in the world, the number 
two satellite TV provider in the United States, the number three business funding provider in the United States. And by the way, in case you're wondering, these are all uh, companies that you would be familiar with. Uh, you'd be familiar with in this call. In the health space, the number one alkaline health company in the UK and Australia. One of the top three fitness instruction companies in the world. Uh, the uh, a dentistry project that's scaling across the country as we speak. And last but not least, Buck's company, uh, 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 Real Dose uh, itself. Um, and in these health markets, we generate, in some cases, upwards of 10 to 15,000 leads per day in an individual market, which gives you a sense for the amount of scale that's available. Now, to give you a sense for the value people place on the type of information that you're about to get your hands on, the way that my company works and the way that I work in my high-level private consulting practice is people pay a substantial upfront fee to work with me to build out one of these funnels and design one of these funnels and to reveal what I'm about to reveal to you today. That ranges from anywhere from 10, 15, 20,000, upwards of 50 to $75,000 upfront, plus an ongoing royalty on the actual revenue generated from the funnel, which ranges from a few thousand dollars a month to tens of thousands of dollars a month every single month. In addition to that, I also have a high-level private consulting practice where I work with 20 individual CEOs who pay $5,000 a month to get access to an hour of my time plus an ongoing royalty on the results that we generate together. That consulting practice has been booked for the last year and a half and there are over 100 people waiting to get into that program. Now the reason why all of this is true is simple. It's because this stuff works. Now I'm going to give you a few examples of what I mean by this stuff working. I want to show you what's possible no matter where you are in your business, whether you're just getting started or if you have a seven or eight figure business right now and you can decide where this has a place in your business. What you see in front of you here is one funnel in one market where last year we generated in just this one funnel just under $9 million in gross revenue, $8.9 million, and $6 million in profit. This is one funnel in one market, in a market where we actually have half a dozen different funnels. Now, lest you think that this is something that only applies to eight and nine figure businesses, this is also something that you can use if you have a smaller six figure business. So this is another business. This one happens to be in the health space. It's one that uses ClickBank as a payment processor. Last year, this business did about $125,000 a year uh, on this particular funnel. The slide needs to be updated a little bit, but in the first month of 2015, after applying what I'm about to show you, we took that to just under $28,000 a month. And so we're on pace to roughly 3x what this business did last year, simply by applying the methodology that I'm about to show you. Now, unless you think that this is something that only applies to existing businesses, whether that's a six, seven, or eight-figure business, I want to show you what's possible when you're starting out from ground zero. So this is another example, a market that we entered from scratch using this exact methodology that we took from nothing to six figures in 12 months. This is a market where we had no website, no reputation, no product, no connections, no traffic, nothing that we broke into and took to six figures and we're on pace to do about a quarter million dollars a year in this market this year and scale from there. Now what's interesting about all this is most people get into consulting as a stepping stone to launching their own business. And one of the things that I'm most frustrated about when working with consultants is they don't know what it's like to really own their own business. They just come in and tell other people what to do. Well, what's interesting about this is I actually took things in reverse. So my story is simple. Uh, I studied at university uh, neuroscience and Asian studies. I graduated with a degree from Brown University and Ivy League school. But what's interesting is I was the first person ever in my family to go to college. I grew up in a blue collar background, not a lot of money. My dad worked for the post office and my mom uh, cut hair for a living. So it was a big deal for me to go to college. And uh, after college, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So, um, but money was always tight and I knew I wanted to make money. So I worked on Wall Street. I uh, worked at the investment bank Goldman Sachs and then later for the uh, multi-industry uh, financial giant American International Group or AIG. And as someone who speaks Chinese, 
I eventually was sent to Shanghai to run AIG's sales office expansion project. This is in the early 2000s. And uh, I moved there, and my wife and I spent uh, almost five years in China. And uh, we got there, and I was in my mid-20s. I was leading a team of 24 Chinese staff. I was running around China, opening up sales offices, tethered to the BlackBerry, living out of hotels, and I hit a quarter-life crisis. And I said, I don't want to do this with the rest of my life. So I started moonlighting as an entrepreneur nights and weekends. And so if you're coming from a corporate background or someone who went to medical school or you have a career that you might be leaving to pursue an online business, I can completely relate. I had to cut the golden handcuffs. I had to leave a lot of money behind um, that I just never got, uh, stock options and, 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 uh, and uh, long-term um, compensation that I just never, I had to leave on the table to quit my job in order to pursue this career as an online business owner. It all came to a head in 2008 when uh, I was based in Shanghai. My wife was pursuing a PhD at Hong Kong University in history. And we were living this crazy bi-country marriage for like three years, where she was in Hong Kong, I was in Shanghai, and we'd fly to visit each other uh, twice a month. And uh, in 2008, if you remember, that's when the world financial crisis hit. And this is when Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns and all these companies uh, went out of business. Um, I woke up one morning, and I stepped inside my office, and I picked up the Wall Street Journal Asia edition, and I looked at the headline, and it read, AIG to file for bankruptcy. At the time, my wife and I had started a little fledgling business in the jewelry making market of all markets um, using the exact methodology that I'm about to show you, although we didn't realize it at the time. And uh, I called, picked up the phone, I called my wife and I said, honey, I think today's the day. And that very day, I turned in my resignation letter to my boss and told him I'm done. Um, uh, left everything behind, sold everything that I owned except for what I could fit into two suitcases, uh, moved in with my wife in Hong Kong in a 400 square foot apartment. We lived on her $500 a month PhD state stipend and I got to work. And I launched uh, our first business using this methodology like I mentioned in the jewelry making space which we took to the six figure mark. Then we launched another business using this methodology in the gardening space which we uh, grew, I call it my first real business because we grew it from nothing to $25,000 a month and then launched a third business in the memory improvement space, which leverages my, my background at Brown in neuroscience, um, uh, which was our, by far our largest and most successful niche business using this exact methodology. Now, if you spend a little bit of time on any of my websites, you'll see the type of results people have gotten working with me and using this methodology. Now, the, the reason why I want to tell you all this and tell you just a little bit about my background and my story is not to give my ego a boost, it's to give you the confidence that what you're about to get access to is something that's been tested. It's something that's been stress tested, it's been battle tested in markets ranging from the ones that I mentioned as well as markets like dog training and music instruction and the list goes on and on. And knowing that this has been tested and stress tested and hopefully giving you the confidence that this is something that you can consider using in your business. Now, we're about to get into the meat and potatoes of what we've got to talk about today, but I want to bring up one last concept, and that's this. Simplicity is powerful. Okay? Simplicity is powerful. Now, what I mean by that is that I think as business owners, and a show of hands, I mean, how many of how many times do we get caught up with shiny object syndrome, right? I know I do. Some newfangled technology that sounds really cool, some you know, uh, quick arbitrage opportunity that you need to take advantage of because it's this glitch in a system and you just got to rush to it. Those things are so enticing, right? They suck us in. But what I'm about to show you is what I've spent the last 10 years successfully implementing. And the reason why that's important is when you build an online business, you want to build it on a solid foundation. You've heard of moat theory before? Anybody familiar with that? Moat theory? The concept of around building a moat around your business? 
Well, what I'm going to show you is something that builds a moat around your business, something that you can go to bed at night, hit the, your head on the pillow, and sleep like a baby knowing that you are insulated from competition and that your business is something that's going to stand the test of time. And what I'm really excited about is that if you are in a health market specifically, this, in my mind, is the most exciting place to apply this methodology. So that being said, I'm going to take a sip of water real quick, and we're going to dive right in. And I want to start with the three biggest mistakes that I see with businesses that I work with, that I consult with, and people that I speak to who are building and launching their online business. And the first problem is that the traffic that they try to go after is too broad. And let me explain what I mean by that. And let's take a health example. So let's say for a moment that you are a trainer, so you have uh, your physical trainer, and you are in my home city of Austin, Texas. And let's pretend for a moment that you are advertising on a keyword that is something like physical trainer, Austin, Texas, to eliminate cellulite. It's pretty specific, right? And I think most of us on this call, we could probably write a reasonably good advertisement landing page to target someone who is searching on that type of keyword. But what's the problem? The problem is how many people do you think are searching on that keyword every single month? Maybe five, four, maybe ten? So the challenge is, how do you scale your business? How do you go after a keyword like physical trainer or a keyword like weight loss or a keyword like health? Or how about advertising on yahoo.com's homepage on a health channel or vertical? The answer is you can't unless you use what I'm about to show you. And I'll give you an example of how I face this in one of my businesses. So as I mentioned, one of the markets that we're in is the memory improvement market. I have a brand that is known as Rocket Memory. Rocket Memory is a series of courses that are designed to help people improve their memory. And when we first launched this business, we initially struggled. Now, what's interesting about this market is that all the keyword data is centered around keywords like improve memory, how to improve memory, memory improvement. And there's a significant amount of volume that's available on that keyword space. Now, the problem with that is when someone's searching on the keyword like improve memory, there's not enough context to know who that person is to speak to them effectively. And the reason is because you might have everybody from an 18-year-old college kid searching on a keyword like improved memory all the way through a 65-year-old man concerned about mental decline. So the question is, how do you market to that entire spectrum of people searching on that one keyword and do it profitably? The answer is you can't unless you use what I'm about to show you. And you can think about this for your business as well, whether you help people lose weight. Think about a keyword like lose weight. What spectrum of people does that represent? Or a keyword around build muscle, or anything in between. And pick whatever concept it is that you specifically help people achieve. Now, the second big problem that I see with clients and businesses that work with me, that reach out to me, is not knowing why their customers or prospects don't buy. Now, I'm going to ask a question on this, and I want you to go to the GoToWebinar chat, and I'm just curious to know what your thoughts are on this. So, in a cold traffic environment, what is considered to be a reasonably good sales conversion rate. What's a reasonably acceptable sales conversion rate? I'm looking for a percentage, and I'm just curious to know what you think that number is. And there's only right answers. I'm just curious to know. So if you go to the GoToWebinar chat and type this in, I'm curious. So we've got 3%, 2%, Joe says 2%, Frank says 1 to 3 
Jim says three, Tyler says three, John says one and a half, Dr. Dan says two to three, Janet says one to three, Jude says three to eight, Romina says one, Thomas one to two, and Nita says five percent. These are great answers. So the answer, generally speaking, is one percent. One percent is kind of the starting point. Now there are businesses that do less than one percent and do fantastic at scale, and there are businesses that do a little bit better than one percent. But generally speaking, 1% is kind of the neighborhood of where you're, you're in the ball game. If you're doing 2%, you're doing pretty damn good. If you're doing 5%, you're crushing it. And if you're doing 10%, I mean, gosh, you're, you're with Richard Branson right now, and you're shopping for islands in the Caribbean. You're not on this trading call. You're printing money. But if you look at that another way, you think about it like this. Even if you're doing astronomically well and you're converting 10% of visitors to your website into customers, what that really means is that 90% of the people who visit your website, 90% of the time, the effort, the energy, and the money you spend to get those people to your website is a complete waste. And it frustrates me to no end that for whatever reason in our industry, businesses just accept it. They just accept that number. The real secret to taking your business to the next level is figuring out how to chip away at that 90% of waste and monetizing it. And I'm going to show you how to do that using what we're about to cover. Now the third problem that I see with the clients that I work with is not knowing what else to sell your customers. Now I'm going to ask another question, and I'm curious to know, and I'm asking you to fill in the blank on something. So when I say the following statement, I want to know what's the first thing that comes to mind. What is it that you think, how would you complete the following sentence? The money is in the blank. So how would you complete that sentence? The money is in the blank. I'll go through some of the answers. I'm just curious to know what your initial thoughts are. So the money is in the, um, so Cindy says bank, Janet says list, John says list, uh, Romina says list, Irby says upsell, uh, Joe says sales, June says follow up, June says list, Jerry says list, 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 fires us bank, bam. The winner is Frank. First one to say it right. What I was looking for is the money's in the back end. The money is in the back end. It's not about that first thing that you sell your customers. It's about what else you sell them. And anybody who said the money's in the list, that's really just another way of saying the money is in the back end. But what's interesting is that people don't think two sales ahead. They're focused on selling whatever it is that they're trying to sell right now. Marketers, even sophisticated marketers, even some of my most sophisticated clients that are doing nine figures, doing over $100 million a year in overall sales, make this mistake. And the mistake is this. They don't set up the, the second sale with the first sale. So in other words, they don't strategically work through selling something that's going to generate demand for the next thing that they sell. And the reason why is it's difficult to put together a strategy that achieves that unless we use what I'm about to show you. And the solution, unsurprisingly, to these three major problems is what you see in front of you right here the ask formula or this survey funnel formula process. And like I mentioned, because our time is limited and I want to be able to go deep enough to show you some tactical, real examples so you can take notes and apply this in your business right away, I'm going to focus on three of the highest leverage aspects of this formula which correspond to those three problems or challenges that we just started with. And we're going to start by solving that first problem that I mentioned about traffic being too broad, and I'm going to show you how you go from that scenario where you might effectively be able to advertise on a tiny sliver of keyword traffic and scale that up 
to broader and broader traffic, which allows you to go from a few leads a day to 100, 1,000, 10,000 leads per day. This is exactly how we do it. And the solution in this case is the first of three surveys that we're going to be talking about. And this first survey is known in my world as something that I call the micro-commitment bucket survey. Now let's go through a case study. So what you see in front of you here is a typical landing page from our rocket memory business, which, as I mentioned to you, struggled when we got this off the ground. Now initially, we ran people through a very typical, what I call, squeeze page sequence, where we sent people to a landing page that had a form asking for a little bit of information. Now when we launched, doing what everybody else in the market was doing, these were our results. So we were acquiring leads at a cost of $12.89 and an opt-in conversion rate of 5%. So show of hands, are those numbers good or those numbers bad? And every time I look at these numbers, I always get that same feeling in my stomach, takes me back in time, and I get very anxious. Because these numbers aren't good, they're not bad, they're terrible. They're absolutely abysmal. And I was bleeding money more than I care to admit doing this. So I hit the pause button. And I sat down and I reflected. And I thought, well, why isn't this working? Why can't I make this work? And I said, well, time out a second. Why is it that I'm taking an approach online that's so different than the conversation I might have with someone offline? And as I go through this scenario, I want you to think about in your business, in your health business, what you might have, the conversation you might have with someone offline, what it might look like. So for me, I thought back to my days at Brown where I taught a section of Neuro 101 for two years, and I taught the memory stuff that served as the foundation for our courses in the Rocket Memory System. And I thought, if someone approached me and said, hey, Ryan, I hear you teach this memory stuff. Can you help me? The absolute last thing that I would do is try to say, yes, I do help people with their memory. In fact, if you just tell me your name and email, I'll jam this free report down your throat and push you away to consume it. But effectively, that's what we do online, and that's what I was doing. I was trying to jam this one-size-fits-all solution down people's throats before I had enough information to know what was right for them. So I said, well, offline, here's what I would do, and what if I apply this online? If someone came to me, I wouldn't do what I described. Instead, I would say, well, yes, it is true that I help people improve their memory, but here's the thing. Before I can determine if I can actually help you, I really need to get a better sense for your situation. I really need to get a better sense for what it is that you're struggling with, what you're trying to do. And with that information, if you just take a few moments to tell me a little bit about yourself, not only can I point you in the right direction, but I can also put together a customized recommendation for your particular situation. And that's what I would do offline. So I thought, what if I try this online? What would happen? Overnight, we took our results from $12.89 a lead to $4.97. And our opt-in rate from 5% to 12.5%. So if you're doing the math at home, what that means is we drove our cost per lead down by 61% and increased our opt-in rate by 143%. But the good news is it gets better. Because over time, my bucket survey concept evolved. And by bucket survey, I mean asking a series of questions to funnel people in one of several potential buckets and then customizing my approach. Again, remember we talked about diagnose and prescribe. I applied something known as micro-commitments. Now, once again, I went back to my background in neuroscience and I thought, well, how can we leverage what we know about human psychology in this acquisition process? And I thought about the fight or flight response. Now, I know there are a lot of people on this call right now that have a medical background, have a science background, so you'll appreciate this. 
And as you probably know, the fight or flight response is a response that's housed in an area of your brain known as the limbic system, specifically in the amygdala. And what's interesting about the fight or flight response, or fight, flight, or freeze response, is that it is elicited when the brain perceives some sort of threat. Now, what's interesting when you start studying the psychology or neuroscience of threats is that when you ask someone to make any sort of change, and here's what's interesting, that change can be positive or negative. When you ask someone to make any sort of change, what happens is, is it fires off that fight or flight response warning bell in a person's brain. And I thought, well, if we're asking for all this information up front, we're asking for someone to take this giant step, it's almost like the equivalent of meeting someone for the first time and instead of waving from afar and shaking their hand, going in for a big sweaty hug and kiss on the lips. For some people, maybe that's cool, maybe that's okay, maybe in certain cultures, but for most of us, that's a little too much too fast, right? Well, that's what happens when you ask for someone's information too early in the process, like their name and email. And so I speculated and I thought, well, what if we reduce the size of the step we're asking people to take? Instead of a giant commitment, what if it were a micro-commitment? Well, it turns out when you reduce the size of the step that you're asking someone to take, you can actually hack that fight or flight response. You can fly below the radar. You don't elicit those warning bells. So that was my hypothesis. And I thought, well, what if instead of asking for all that information all in one step, instead we start by showing someone a video that sells people in the idea of answering a few simple survey questions that are broken down one question at a time, and then after achieving some action-taking momentum, culminate in that email opt-in step. So when we applied this in the memory business, here's what happened. Again, we'd already taken our cost per lead down from almost $13 a lead to under $5 a lead, and our opt-in rate to up to 12.5%. And when we added the micro-commitment component on top of that, we dropped our cost per lead to $3.37 and increased our opt-in rate to 19%, which if you're doing the math at home, overall that meant we took our cost per lead down by 76% and our opt-in rate up by 271%. Now, I know those numbers as percentages don't really mean a whole lot, so think about it like this. I want you to close your eyes for a moment and imagine that in your business, you pay a dollar to acquire an opt-in, to acquire a lead. What would it do for your business if you woke up tomorrow to find that you could acquire the same number of leads for 24 cents each. That's the type of impact this had on our business. Now, the good news is it gets even better. When you solve that second problem of not knowing why your prospects don't buy. Now, the solution here is going to be the second survey we're going to be talking about today. And this survey is something that I affectionately call the Do You Hate Me survey. So what is the Do You Hate Me survey? Well, as Buck knows, whenever I design a sales funnel using the methodology that we're going through here, one of the things that I like to do is give people the absolute best offer that we can make available. So you might, whatever it is that you sell, whether it's a supplement, whether it's a health coaching, whether it's some sort of information product that teaches people to lose weight or burn belly, uh, uh, to, to, to tighten up their, their stomach muscles or to get rid of cellulite or whatever it is that you might sell. Eventually, I like to offer people the absolute best deal that I can. And now, I'll clarify something on this, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but this is something that you might want to take a note down on. I'm not a fan of discounts. I'm more a fan of lowering the buying threshold. Discounts have the effect of cheapening your product, cheapening your brand, but you can achieve the same result by lowering the buying threshold. So one of the things I like to do is do a pay half now, pay half later, or a $1 trial, or a just pay shipping offer. And so I try to offer the absolute best deal that I can after I've given 
someone an opportunity to buy a few times. Now, if they still do not buy from me, or in your case, you, this is where your Do You Hate Me survey comes in. And the Do You Hate Me survey gets its name because it's a controversial, it's a response-inducing subject line that you can use in your email that ruffles a few feathers and gets people to respond. And what you see in front of you here is an example of a Do You Hate Me survey in action. And it's a survey that you send by email, typically. Here's an example. I'm going to read through some copy. And again, this is something that you want to write down because this is highly tested copy, something that you can leverage in your business. And I'm going to talk fast, so you might want to write fast. The email goes like this. Subject line, do you hate me? Hey, it's Ryan here. And I need your help real quick. But first, I need to ask you a question. Do you hate me? And I'll put a smiley face so that they know that this is tongue in cheek and that I'm joking. The reason why I'm asking is because the other day I gave you the opportunity to try the XYZ program for free, but for some reason you passed. And that's perfectly fine, but it did strike me as a little bit weird. And it did make me wonder, is it because of me? Was it something I said? Something I didn't say? Or in other words, do you hate me? And it gets cut off here, but the email goes on to say, if you could do me a favor and just click on the link below to tell me what's the reason why you decided not to invest in the XYZ program at this time. It would mean the absolute world to me. Thanks so much for your feedback. I look forward to hearing from you. All my best, Ryan. So the question is, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? What sort of impact does it have when you ask this question to your audience? Let's take a look at another case study. So this is a market in a, a client a partner business where we recently ran a Do You Hate Me survey to a segment of their list. And what you see in front of you here is our AWeber dashboard. And you notice that we sent out an email to about 22,000 email subscribers. We got about 7,500 people to open, 2,000 people to click, and about 1,000 people to respond to our survey. This is a dashboard to our survey gizmo account. Now, when we asked this question, what was interesting is we discovered five very specific things. Four of them were very specific objections that we did, did not do a good job of overcoming in our sales messaging. We just completely missed it. We just did not do a good job of overcoming why someone should buy if they have those four hesitations. And the fifth one was the most egregious error of them all. It turns out that the promotion that we ran when we were offering this amazing deal fell over a religious holiday weekend for a specific religious group. And it turns out that we completely underestimated the number of people in this particular religion in our list. And we got hundreds of people providing feedback saying, hey, listen, I would have loved to have taken advantage of this offer, but I was unplugged for the weekends. I was visiting family. I was on holiday. I'm just checking my email right now, and I missed the deadline. So what we decided to do is we got together and we said, well, let's do this. So it's kind of unfair, the fact that we did this over a holiday weekend, and we don't like to exclude people. What if we reopen the offer and we run a webinar answering all the questions that came up in our Do You Hate Me survey, overcome those four specific objections that we didn't do a good job of overcoming, and reopen things for 48 hours for everybody who is in this religious group and to the audience as a whole to be fair to everybody. So when we did that, here are the results. We picked up an additional 445 sales generating, in this case, over $19,000 in income. Now, I get that in a vacuum this doesn't make much sense or really mean much. I'm going to explain the context of this in just a moment. But before we do that, I want you to look at these numbers for a moment. So we sent this email out to 21,000 people in change, got about 7,500 to open, 2,000 people to click, 1,000 to take the survey, and 445 people bought. To put that in perspective, that meant that we picked up an additional 2% of non-buyers of this audience ended up purchasing from us. Remember at the beginning when we talked about the secret to taking your business to the next level is chipping away at that 90% 
of people who haven't spent any money with your business, but that you've invested time, money, and energy, and effort to generate that traffic, well, this is how you chip away at that 90%, just a few percentage points at a time. This is one of the steps. Now, just to put these numbers into context for a moment, the number of buyers before the Do You Hate Me survey, 1,238. That was our initial promotion before we ran this survey. By picking up those additional 445 buyers, we grew the size of this campaign by 36%. So show of hands, who wants to grow your business by 36% simply by asking people why they didn't buy? Do you hate me? Was it something I said? Did I do something wrong? The good news is it gets even better when you solve that third problem that we talked about, which is not knowing what else to sell your customers. Now, in this case, we're going to be talking about the third survey we'll be covering today, something known as the pivot survey. Now the pivot survey is this. After you've run that do you hate me survey, what you'll find when you do this analysis for yourself is that a certain percentage of people, their responses are effectively, this product was just not the right fit. And there are many variations of that, and it takes many shapes and sizes and many forms, but effectively that's what's going on. So the question is, how do you address all those people? They like you, they like your business, they like what you stand for, but whatever it is that you sold is just not quite right. Well, that's where the pivot survey comes in. See, the pivot survey is effectively a game of, well, let me see if I can get closer. Am I getting closer? And the pivot survey is yet another email that takes your data from your Do You Hate Me survey in this case and applies it in a different way. The Do You Hate Me survey is an email that comes out after you finish that Do You Hate Me, pivot, excuse me, pivot survey is an email that comes out after you finish that Do You Hate Me survey campaign and you're giving people the opportunity to choose their own adventure. And you remember those books, right? When we were kids, those choose your own adventure books where you could flip to a page and you'd choose between climbing up the mountain, jump to page 59, go down the river and take the raft, jump to page 63, or turn around and start back at the beginning, jump to page 124. That's effectively what we're doing here with the pivot survey. We're saying, I get that that first thing that I sold you or tried to sell you is not quite right for you, but let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Now, you're not doing that explicitly, but that's effectively what you're doing behind the scenes. So the pivot survey, here's an example. By the way, this is more copy. If you want to jot this down, you might want to take down. Proven, tested copy. So I'm like the brain surgeon who comes in, does his one piece, saves the guy's life, and then moves on to the next one. There may be three people in the world who could do it, and I am one of them. So the big question is this. What would you like to talk about next? How to get more clients, how to raise your rates, or how to productize your services. And again, I know the email's cut off, but it goes on to say, please click on the link above that sounds immediately most appealing to you, and we'll start covering that topic minutes from this very moment. The question is, what are the results? Well, if you remember, going back to the previous case study, where we generated about 445 additional buyers from that Do You Hate Me survey for a total of 1,683 buyers, we applied that pivot survey that same strategy. And when we did that, we generated an additional 217 buyers. These are people that otherwise would never bought anything from us simply by asking them, what would you like to cover next instead? And giving them the choice to determine what they want to focus on next. Now, let's take a look at the overall impact on this campaign so you can get a sense for the magnitude that these simple things can have on your business. And we've just begun to scratch the surface. So initially we did about $53,000 in revenue, picked up uh, $19,000 in revenue from the Do You Hate Me campaign. 
And when we added the pivot survey revenue, that represented an additional $8,000 for a total of $27,000 in incremental revenue, which without those two things, this campaign would have been $52,000 in revenue. Together with it, just my math is correct, just over $80,000 in revenue, which represents an increase in 51%. So once again, show of hands. Who wants to grow their business by 50% simply by asking a few simple questions? Asking the right questions at the right time to the right people in the right way using the right language. And to put that in perspective, that means if you're doing $100,000 this year, that would be like doing $150,000 next year in your business simply by asking these questions. If you earned $200,000 this year, imagine earning $300,000 simply by asking the right questions at the right time in your business. Oh, and by the way, this doesn't even include the pivot survey to buyers, so people who bought whatever it is that you're selling that you ask, where should we go next, which is where the real money is. So like I mentioned, simple, right? Simple gets results. Over 3 million leads, 200,000 customers, 23 markets, $100 million in online revenue. And again, these numbers understated because we've scaled things up now that we're doing between 50 and 65,000 leads per day using this exact process, which, based on what we covered today, combined the three techniques that we talked about, the micro-commitment bucket survey, the do you hate me survey, and the prospect pivot survey, which in the overall process that we follow fit in these three boxes here, and in the overall context, looks like this. Now, if you're like most people, you might be wondering, okay, this makes sense, but that micro-commitment bucket survey, how are you figuring out what questions to ask? How are you figuring out what buckets to funnel people into? How many questions are you asking? And what about, how do you get people to take that survey in the first place? How do you make it compelling and persuasive so that you are able to get 5, 10, 15,000 people per day excited about completing that? And what about after they fill in the survey, what happens next? If you're funneling people into these different possible directions, how are you monetizing all that traffic? How do you sell to these people? And what about, you talk about the monies in the back end, well, how do you use the survey data to determine what else you sell next? And what about the email sequence? I get the fact that the do you hate me email and pivot email work so well, but they don't exist in a vacuum. What is it that you do that leads up to the, those emails that makes them so effective? Well, the answer is this is what we do all day, every day, and this is something that has come to be known as my survey funnel formula. Now, what I want to do now is walk you through the process of how you set up one of these survey funnels in your business following the six-week process that I go through whenever I set one of these up myself. So you can take notes now on how you go through the six-week step-by-step process. Now, in the first week, I do something that we didn't talk about today, which is something called the deep dive pre-survey. And Buck is very familiar with this. This is the process that we go through where we ask a series of open-ended questions, and they're very strategic, and the languaging is quite important, where we determine in the market what buckets exist. This is the survey that starts everything else. Everything else is built upon this foundation, and this is what we do in the first week. Then in the second week is where I build out the micro-commitment bucket survey. That's the one that we talked about where you ask one question at a time that becomes a permanent part of your online sales process. So if you are a health practitioner, you're a personal trainer, you're considering selling a supplement, this is where you ask people a series of questions designed to diagnose and prescribe. Now you might be asking, what if it, I only sell one product? How do I prescribe different things? Well, it's about positioning and repositioning that one thing that you sell in different ways so that it speaks to people depending on what situation they're in. 
For example, in our rocket memory business, for instance, we have one primary initial course that we sell all people. And it doesn't matter if someone's an 18-year-old kid studying for college exams or a 65-year-old 65 65 man concerned about mental decline. The course, the product, the training that we sell helps people in both of those situations. We just talk about that training in very different ways. Now, in week three, we build out what I describe as the prospect discovery landing page and video. This is the landing page that people land on on your website that sells them on why they should complete that micro-commitment bucket survey. And this part is critical. And by the way, as Buck knows, you're not calling this thing a survey. In fact, people don't even realize that this is what they're taking. To many prospects, they don't even see what's actually happening. Now, in the fourth week is where we build what I describe as the same visit sale video sales letter. And this is how you monetize that traffic after it comes through that micro-commitment survey, that micro-commitment bucket survey. This is where you're actually selling that front-end primary product initially. Then in week five is where you build out your profit maximization sequence. These are the things that you sell on the back end, the things that you upsell to your customer who has gone through that survey. And this is where all your profit typically comes from. Then in week six is where you design your email autoresponder sequence. And there's an autoresponder sequence to both non-buyers, people who don't buy from you, as well as buyers, people who buy from you. Now, the reason why I'm telling you all this is, as I mentioned, this is something I've spent the last 10 years of my life doing. And up until recently, up until as recent as last year, this is something that I had never shared publicly. This was, if I were Colonel Sanders, this was my secret family recipe that I held very close to the vest. This is something that's responsible for most of my family's wealth. It's responsible for a tremendous amount of income, uh, both for myself and for my clients. But two things have happened in my life. The first thing is I, three years ago, and Buck knows this, and we were talking about this earlier today, um, had a bit of a health scare. Um, it was right after my first son was born. He was about six months old. And uh, in my early 30s, I started getting very sick. Um, originally, we chalked it up to the fact that my, we thought, um, well, I thought, um, being the father of, a, of an infant, not getting a lot of sleep, I was just burning out, I'm tired all the time. Um, living in Austin, Texas, a place where it gets in the triple digits in the summer, I was also thirsty all the time. So I was tired all the time. I was thirsty all the time. I was getting up in the middle of the night to pee all the time because I was drinking all this water, which was creating this perpetual cycle of fatigue and thirst and going to the bathroom. At the same time, I lost a whole bunch of weight. I went from about 165, 170 pounds to my low was 132 pounds. And after my son was born, my wife implored me to apply for life insurance. And I did so. I applied for life insurance um, in July and uh, had an exam, and uh, all was good. And I left for uh, a conference, a ClickBank exchange, which was held in New York City at the Marriott Marquis in, uh, in Times Square in, uh, in Manhattan. And uh, it was in August. And I came back from that uh, training, and uh, I opened up the, a letter on the counter, which was the result of my life insurance exam, or life insurance uh, application. And it read, denied. So I called up our life insurance agent. I said, listen, I think there's some mistake. Listen, I'm, you know, I'm a young guy. I'm fit. I've never had any health issues in my life. Um, there must be some mistake. And he said, uh, Ryan, I think you need to sit down. Um, not only are your results, uh, not only is, are you denied, but I have your lab results, your medical results in front of me. And I'm going to uh, fax them over to you. And he says, I'm not a doctor but your lab results are off the charts. And I think you need to go see a doctor uh, right now. And uh, he faxed me the results. And I made the biggest mistake that you can make when you get scary uh, test results. I went to Dr. Google. I went to Dr. Google and started Googling what they meant. Um, and what I found was uh, kidney failure, um, renal system shutdown, pancreatic failure, um, and um, I started panicking, 
And eventually later that night after our son went to bed, I, my wife asked me about the life insurance and I had to tell her and I shared the results and she broke down. And we scheduled an appointment to see the doctor the next day and um, corroborated the lab results and the doctor looked me in the eye and grabbed me by the shoulders and said, Ryan, you should be in a coma right now. You need to go to the emergency room, and you're not driving, and you need to go now. Well, it turns out, and I know there's some doctors on the call, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You've probably even guessed what was going on with my body, but I had slipped into a state known as DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. I lost all this weight because my body wasn't metabolizing anything that I was eating, and I was literally eating muscle tissue. Um, my sugar, my blood glucose levels had been elevated and elevated for some time um, to the tune that there was blood in my urine, uh, my, my kidneys were shutting down, my pancreas stopped working, and I spent uh, 10 days in the ICU um, being refilled with fluids and, and medication. Um, and just being, being saved. And so, um, I'm sorry. Um, and when you go through a situation like that, you come to terms with your own mortality. Um, it it uh, it brings things into focus. It brings your life into focus in a tremendous way. And I stepped out of that hospital. I made a decision, and I said that um, what I'm doing is 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 too powerful to just keep close to the vest and share with a handful of private clients. This is something that business owners, especially in the health space, um, need to get their hands on because it can truly change the world. It can truly make a profound impact. And there are people that are doing some amazing things that need to get their hands on this. So I stepped out and I said, how am I going to do this? Because I was running a high-level private consulting practice with a small team. And I attended a mastermind and I explained my situation. I said, I'm in a situation right now where there's more demand for what I want to do. And I want to get this out there. And I have built this internal training to train up my team to take off some of the workload from me so I could spend more time with my family. And I said, I need to scale up what I'm doing in a profound way. What do you think? And people at the mastermind universally agreed and said, Ryan, documenting your process, getting it out of your head, building an internal company training portal so that you can bring new employees in to master your methodology is the way to go. And I was interesting at the end of my hot seat in this mastermind is um, one person in the back of the room raised their hand and said, you know, hey, Ryan, I don't know if you'd be open to this, but um, I know this is an, an internal training for your employees, but would you be open to um, maybe letting me uh, see this, have access to this? And at the time, I never, it's not something that I ever anticipated I'd ever do. Again, um, I wanted to get this out there, but I was torn because this is how I generated all my wealth. This was my secret sauce. And eventually, everybody in the room started raising their hands and nodding their head and saying, yes, Ryan, I'd like to get access to this as well. Uh, would, you, would you be open to considering it? And so I ran a trial, and I let a handful of people in the training through this, and they were blown away. They told me that they'd never seen anything like this. They couldn't believe that something like this existed. They understood how I was able to go into market after market with nearly a 100% success rate, simply following the methodology. And they thought, Ryan, we thought you were brilliant, but it's really the methodology. And I understand now why you've had the results that you've had. So I decided to let a few more people in, and the results repeated themselves. And eventually, we put a relatively large number of people through the training. And the response that I got, again, universally, was this is amazing, except there's one thing. There's one thing that's missing. And they said, Ryan, I recognize that one of the secrets to your process is the copy is just really good. It's just really persuasive. It's really compelling. And I see that's what separates what you do from everybody else. I'm not a professional copywriter. How can I combine your level of copy with your methodology? And that takes us to
where we are today, and this is what I'd like to do for you. I want to give you access to a program that I put together uh, with one of the best copywriters alive a few years ago that's not available anywhere else when you invest in the survey funnel formula training that I'm about to make available. This program is something called VSL Fast Track. It's a course I developed with a marketer that some people on this call may be familiar with. His name is John Benson. He's largely regarded as one of the godfathers of the video sales letter me method. And he's someone that I collaborated with um, back in 2010 to develop uh, this course. And we developed a course that taught our combined methodology on how to develop and how to write compelling landing page, same visit sale, upsell video sales letters, even if you're not yet a world-class copywriter. And the course sold hundreds of copies. But eventually one day John came to me and he said, Ryan, we can't sell this course anymore. And I said, why? And he said, there's a problem. The problem is um, I want to make a high-priced program available that I want to sell for two, maybe $3,000. And in order for me to do that, I cannot keep our course together on the market because it'll undermine, it'll cannibalize our sales, so we have to take it off the market. And I originally um, disagreed and, and we went back and forth and eventually we came to terms and we said, okay, I will never sell this course ever again, period. But we came to an agreement that allowed me to give away the course as a bonus for anybody who invested in anything that I came out with in the future. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is when you take the next step with me today, I want to gift you a copy of this course that you cannot purchase anywhere, something that we sold hundreds of copies at $497. And in case you're wondering the value of this course, this is Jonathan who successfully implemented the survey funnel methodology. And he said, while he was waiting to go through the funnel stuff, he jumped into the VSL course and was able to create a funnel that's converting 250% better than his old video. And that's just with this one piece alone. So the question that you're probably asking yourself is, okay, cool. So I get this bonus. Now this survey funnel training, what is the cost? What is the investment? Now people have gone through this course before, and Buck knows this, it, have told me that this is something that I should sell for a thousand, two thousand dollars, maybe three thousand dollars. But this isn't something that I want to sell at that price point. This is something that I want to make available at a price point that is such a no-brainer that you are literally going to hear me say this price, you're going to click on the link I'm about to give you, and you're going to rush to get access to this because it is just such a no-brainer. So the Survey Funnel Formula Training plus the VSL Fast Track Program is something that you can get your hands on today through this link only for one payment of $197. And you can do it by visiting the link below, surveyfunnelformula.com forward slash buck. Now, if someone would just do me a favor, would you, Megan, first and foremost, would you please put that link in the chat so that it's clickable? And would someone just do me a favor and visit that link to make sure that I actually typed this in correct, I didn't mess something up with the um, uh, capitalization or something? Um, and by the way, um, hey, yeah, Ryan. Yeah, go ahead, Buck. Yeah. Um, when when I heard that this was the price point, um, I got nauseous <laughs> because um, let me just say this: uh, I've gotten to know you um, o o over the the weeks and months that we've been working together, and having met you personally, and and been uh, you graciously invited me to your mastermind, and and I got to say, you are one class act um, first and foremost, and uh, the you know. People on this call know that I am about uh, ethical health marketing, doing things the right way, and the mission that you're on and the information that you've just conveyed just on this uh, on this webinar, uh, people are going to make a lot of money from this information, uh, wh whether they take advantage of this uh, this crazy offer you just put out <laughs> or not. Um, and I am one of the ones that paid you ten thousand or. Thousands of, I'm sorry, tens of thousands of dollars startup fee and thousands of dollars a month currently for you to be a, a, a consultant to our business. And we are doing that happily. Um, so 
when I the, the reason I'm nauseous is I'm kind of contrasting <laughs> this <laughs> offer to the, the the current arrangement that that we have, and we're doing it. We're paying you those fees with a big smile on our face. So um, I, I just want to say, a uh, I vouch for you because I know you personally and the caliber of person that you are and the quality of the training that you uh, uh, you put together, and I know the value of this course. Um, it is it is the future. It is the way. I kind of look at it, you know, based on my you know, previous career in selling, in selling high end software to uh, to corporations. Uh, you we had this saying: um, don't show up and throw up when you give a sales presentation. Mm. And what you do is, you know, what you're training people to do is uh, what I would call consultative selling, mm -hmm. getting information. Uh, asking questions, listening, and then varying your approach based on what it is that you hear, and uh, as opposed to what a lot of people do online, which is the show up and throw up and you know presume that they know better. So uh, the fact that you've systematized this, you put this together, and by the way, I know John Benson. Um, you know, we were one of the first uh, businesses to do a VSL for the dietary supplement space, and I can tell you the value just of the VSL formula alone, because I was at uh, I was just at the traffic and conversion event. John was selling his three thousand dollar you know version of this. You're giving it away as a bonus. <laughs> I I would just go get this to for the you know for that piece alone. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just um, I'm shaking here because I'm uh, a I know the the mission that you're on. It really is in alignment with my mission of uh, getting a lot of high quality businesses out there in the health space. And if they apply, just as we're doing at Real Dose Nutrition, what you're teaching with the survey formula, I really think that they're going to become unstoppable with their business. And again, I want to make sure they do this the right way, they get the right message out there, and they're helping the maximum. Really, it's your duty uh, as, a, as a marketer of high-quality products to get your message and, con and uh, convert the highest percentage people you possibly can. I think you know one percent is a travesty in terms of conversion rate, and so Pete, you know it's your mission, it's your duty to apply these, uh, you know, this strategy ethically. So I'll get off my podium, you know, now. But I'm I'm just uh, that that excited about what you've done, what you've shared. You know, people hopefully they took the notes on those strategies that you 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 shared. We're just down the road with you on this, and already I'm excited about the results that we're having. And I know that we are going to be uh, continue to be a force to be reckoned with because we've met you and we are working with you. So I just wanted to thank thank you for what you've done so far for our business. Uh, and uh, I appreciate all those kind words. I really do. Uh, I want to spend a few minutes just answering a, a few questions that I think are um, that might come up, and I want to go through a few a few things that that you might be wondering about. The first thing is is if you're listening to this. Um, a question you should be asking yourself if you haven't already is, well, what's the catch? You know, why are you giving away your entire formula for you know what amounts to be a song? Nothing. Um, well, it's twofold, and I'll be per perfectly transparent about this. So, I know that whenever I've done this in the past, whenever I've virtually given away my training and everything that we do, uh, for every hundred people that move forward and invest in this. There will be one or two real doses who will reach out and say, hey, Ryan, uh, this is absolutely brilliant. I'd like to work with you personally and work with your company to build this. And that's a much bigger investment. That's a much bigger ticket item. And I know that happens. It happens consistently. And I'm okay if it's only one or two out of 100, meaning everybody else gets to benefit without working with me directly. And I'm fine with that. The second thing is we're building a, a movement. And um, as Buck knows, I have a the book that's coming out, and I have certain numbers of businesses that I want to impact. And I know that if I sell this at $3,000, that it's going to be a tougher decision for some businesses to make um, to move forward. So I've priced it in such a way that it is such a no-brainer that even if you use what you discover in the first module of this program, you're going to walk away feeling that this is one of the smartest decisions that you've made in 2015 for your business.
full stop. We're also building a community of people who are using this in their business. And Buck is in this community. He's familiar with this community. And I know, and Buck knows this, that I play the long game. I have clients that have been working with me for six, seven, eight years. And the reason for that is because I very much have that long view. And I look at this as the first start of our relationship together, not the end all. That being said, I recognize that even the, despite the glowing words that Buck might have said, you don't know me well enough to make a decision, perhaps, about me and this program. So what I want to do is this. I want to give you an opportunity to go through the first four weeks of this training before you even have to decide if you want to keep it. And the way that this works is simple. You have a full, unconditional, 30-day, 100% money-back guarantee, meaning that you can go through the training, download everything to your hard drive, watch all the videos, follow along with me, go through the step-by-step -step cheat sheets, look over my shoulder as I walk you through the process of building one of these funnels from start to finish. I walk you through my thought process. I go through all the persuasion elements at each step, the nuances of the language and the choices that are used, how to determine what questions to ask, how to determine how you phrase those questions, how to figure out what buckets to focus on in your market, and one of the things that we were talking about on our call immediately before this training, which buckets of the market are actually worth ignoring. All of these things require judgment calls based on a decade of quantitative experience. And I know at each step of the way, the numbers that you should expect to see, the percentage of people who answer that first question that you ask, the percentage of people who answer the last question, the percentage of people who purchase from you on that first sale, the percentage of people who buy at each individual email. When you have 10 years of experience doing this in 23 different markets and you're generating now almost 18 million leads over the course of the year, you notice trends. You've done enough split tests that you know what is reasonable to expect and you get to benefit from all that experience. Now, in case you're wondering, the people who have gotten results, is it limited to big companies and companies that have worked with me directly or personally? Well, I want to walk you through some of the results that people are getting using this exact program right now as we speak. Will writes, this is the best and most comprehensive use of the surveying and segmenting technique that I've seen today. Darren says, I use the layering technique he mentioned, and I'm now getting a 53% opt-in rate from Facebook traffic after they self-qualify through a three-question survey. Ron writes, when I started working with Ryan to date, the project has resulted in well over $500,000 in revenue. Antonio writes, I purchased a while back, and my one client has had over 700 leads generated for his business, which has turned over into six figures in coaching clients. Darren writes, uh, our survey funnel is still half-assed, and I'm quoting that at this point, yet is still producing a 40% lift in total monthly revenue year over year. Brandon says that uh, by building a survey funnel and following Ryan's model, I was able to go from a 70% ROI, losing money, to a 150% ROI, making money. Corey writes, since buying Ryan's course, I landed a cold traffic funnel client for $20,000 and 10% of funnel earnings and a percent of media spend. And Sean writes, by simply following the formula and pathways that Ryan has laid out, I've secured an $84,000 contract for clients to start in January 2015. And folks that some people might be familiar with, Ryan Dice says, if paid traffic is what you're after, then you're wise to study Ryan Levesque. His stuff is built for scale. And marketers that you may be familiar with, ranging from Ryan Dice, Perry Marshall, who's a private client, Brian, Brian Kurtz, Keith Baxter, Andre Chaperone, Ben Settle, Jack Bourne, Harlan Kilstein, Denny Inney, Kurt Malley, Keith Krantz, Kevin Rogers, Michael Lovich, Buck Rizvi. <laughs> That's the photo that we wanted. Steve Gray, Erica Rocha, Risa Murgatroy, Charles Kirkland, Greg Wells, Ryan Lee, Todd Brown, Russell Brunson, Jonathan Mizell, Derek Johansson are all customers and clients. And if you look at some of the companies using our working with us, range from Fortune 500 companies all the way through uh, Inc. 500 companies, through small businesses, many of which are in the health space. And again, this is the same information that CEOs pay $5,000 a month just to get access to an hour of my time every single week. 
Again, that's an opportunity that's been sold out for the last 18 months with a wait list of over 100 people. This is the same methodology that you see literally tripled this business profit this year. And by the way, this is an audio recap from the business owner himself explaining this, as is this. The survey funnel strategy alone increased front end conversion by 100% as is this, increased sales by $15,000 per week. In fact, there were over 100 audio testimonials from clients speaking to the results that they have gotten using this. Again, all yours for just one payment of $197 at the link below. Just to sum things up, everything that you get, you get access to a recorded six-week live training program, so it's recorded over six weeks covering everything that you described here, plus the VSL Fast Track program valued at $497, which you cannot purchase. You cannot buy this anywhere, plus the opportunity to check everything out for a full four weeks before you even have to decide if you want to keep it for just one payment today of $197 when you visit surveyfunnelformula.com forward slash buck. What I'd like to do now, if it's okay, in the limited time that we have is answer any questions that might have come up along the way and, uh, and go from there. So uh, I'm going to take a look at the chat. Um, do you want, me, you want uh, to read some questions off, Ryan, or how, uh, how do you want to approach it? Yeah, I can look through them. If there's anything I missed, I'm just looking. There's a whole bunch of people who said, oh, wow. We got uh, Frank, Frank uh, and Francine uh, have our, <laughs> are in. It looks like a bunch of people have already uh, are taking you up on, on your very generous I, I'm, you know, Arguably, this is the best value in Internet marketing I have ever seen. Wow. So... Wow. Um, so let me go through some of these, because I think some of these you might not have the answer to. So I'm just going to go in reverse here. So Gabriel asks, do you get access to all the info at once, or do you have to wait for six weeks? Uh, the course is designed as a drip course, so you get um, each module, uh, one module a week to not overwhelm you. And it's internally. This allows you to follow along in real time. That said, after if you if you really want to get everything at once, I know some people, they, they lock Just shoot Hello? an email to my assistant. Her name is, did I lose the audio? Yeah, we lost you for two seconds there, Ryan. Okay. Um, what I was saying is that if you, if you really want to get everything all at once, if you want to, you really just want to go through everything on the weekend, shoot an email to my assistant. Her name is Kimberly. So we've got Megan on the call. My other assistant is Kimberly. Mm -hmm. And her email address is contact at rlassociatesllc. And Megan, if you wouldn't mind just putting Kimberly's email address in the chat. You just shoot her an email with your receipt and just say, hey, um, I'd like to get access to everything at once. Can you set me up with this? Uh, how do I do that? And I want to make a note about the, um, the members area, if you will, for this. Um, I want to make something clear. You're getting access to my internal company training area. Okay? So this isn't like a big, fancy information product or something like that. You're actually, just like if when I, we have an on -ramping, uh, onboarding process whenever we hire a new employee and they get set up with our internal systems. And one of the things they get access to is access to our internal training library um, for our internal um, staff. So Kimberly will actually be manually setting you up as if you were an employee in my company getting access to the same training that I um, give access to, to my team. Um, so the reason why I bring that up is uh, you, it, it's not instantaneous. So um, if you order right now, uh, Kimberly will uh, uh, be setting you up. Um, if you wait till the weekend, then you'll have to wait. You'll have to wait to business hours because um, I, I don't ask Kimberly to, to work over the weekend. Um, it also brings up one point that I didn't mention earlier in terms of what's the deadline to take advantage of this. Now, if you go to surveyfunnelformula.com, you'll find that you, you cannot get access to this training. It's just not available for sale publicly elsewhere. The only place to get access to it is this link right here, surveyfunnelformula.com forward slash buck. It's the only place in the world where you can get in right now. And the reason for that is simple. We don't keep this open all the time. This isn't my primary business. Our primary business is we help companies like Realdose. We work with a small number of companies in a deep way. So we kind of periodically will open the doors and then we'll close things off. Um, and so uh, the deadline to take advantage of this is going to be this Sunday at 11.59 Pacific Standard Time. And the reason why I do this, I know a few people might be listening to this in your car or you might be on the road and you might not have your credit card in front of you. Um, I strongly urge you to do this right now while you have this training in front of you, while the window's open, while it's on your mind. You, don't want, you, don't, you just don't want things to slip. You don't want to forget about it. You don't want Monday to come around and say, oh, crap, I was going to buy that training and then you forgot. Um, because I'm, 
fuck knows this. I'm someone who sticks to my word, and to be fair to everybody who does take action, we do honor and stick to that deadline. So there, if you send an email on Monday, it, it'll be, um, unfortunately, we won't be able to get you in. Um, so let me go through some of the other... Uh, yeah, get, get, Gabrielle had, uh, um, let's see here, I just want to make sure, or, I'm sorry, it was, uh, yeah, Gabriel said, uh, I, I'm uh, in the middle of my first launch, which is going to take place in June, still working on the product. Does purchasing, the, does purchasing this product now make sense for me? I think absolutely. Um, I think when you see this and you see this approach, I'll, put it, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Whether you're able and in a position to implement this now or in a few months, I strongly urge that you take advantage of this now, and here's why. In six months, this, this might not be an option. Um, we haven't decided if we're going to make this available forever. Um, our business model is, is shifting. Um, you know, to Buck's point, um, I don't know um, uh, if this is something that we'll permanently offer or if we will, you know, work with more companies in a in a kind of done for you fashion at a, a you know tens of thousands of dollars a month. Um, so even if you only plan on using this later, it's a good idea to get this now and just put a reminder in your calendar to take a look at it later. Um, if you are thinking about launching something, absolutely it makes sense to go through this now because it, I have a feeling it will impact how you sell and position that new product that you're thinking of launching. So there's no better time to be doing that than right now. Um, let me just go through some of these other questions. Mm -hmm. okay. John, um, congratulations. He says he's in. And uh, Roger, if I think it's, this is the Roger I'm thinking of, uh, congratulations, Roger, for, uh, for purchasing the product. Okay, let me, a few questions about what you actually get, so let me explain. So you're getting access to the training, the methodology for implementing this survey funnel formula in your business. Specifically, what's included is this. Those six weekly steps that I have on the screen right here, every single week I go through and explain how to complete that step. So what that means is initially when we first, when I first created this internally, I had anywhere from one to three hour videos that I walked through where you could see me going through the process of creating a real live actual survey funnel from start to finish. So you follow along with me and I articulate the whole process. Well, being the survey guy, no surprise that as I put more people externally through the training, I asked questions and I said, what do you like, what would you change, et cetera. So one of the things that people asked for was a way to cut the videos down into shorter bite-sized chunks. So that's exactly what we did. So every week you have a series of short, bite-sized videos that walk you through each step of the process. Now this is something that you can implement yourself. If you have a, a person on your team, a marketing manager or uh, 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 someone on your staff that might be the person implementing this, you can share it with them on your team and they can go through this to implement the nuts and bolts of this. Um, after we created those bite-sized chunk videos, people said, this is great, but I'm the type of person that likes to just kind of skim and read real quick and kind of go through the step-by-step -step checklist. So that's exactly what we did. We put together a series of step-by-step -step checklists on how to create each step along the way. Then people said, you know, Ryan, what I've noticed is that in your training, your copy, and Buck knows this, sometimes you go into copy mode and your copy is just almost word perfect verbatim. Is there any way that we could get some transcripts of those sections? So we transcribed all those copy sections. And then people said, hey, the examples that you're going through, this is great. Is there any way that we get some templates? So email templates for what we want to, what, what our emails we want them to look like. What about landing page templates in terms of what we want the landing pages to look like? What about the surveys themselves and the actual uh, uh, questions we want to ask? Can you give us some templates? So we did that as well. Now, I know a couple questions have been around the technical implementation. What do you, what is needed in this? What, what's technically needed? So in the training itself, what I do is I walk through the different options that you have for the technical implementation of this. And, and what I mean by that is how you implement this if you want to have something custom coded yourself, if you want to use third-party software tools like Survey Gizmo or free tools like Google uh, Drive, Google Forms, or if you want to use our, the, our proprietary survey software, which is not included in this training, it's a separate, uh, a, a separate program, how to use that. And I walk through all the different uh, methodologies so you have options if you want to use a free uh, tool available all the way through some of the paid options. I also show you how to do this no matter what technology you might be using in your business already. 
So as you can imagine, the 23 different markets that we're in, we're using different systems in every single one. So in the case of Realdose, we use Entreport as our email uh, service provider, but other businesses that I work with, we might use Infusionsoft. You saw Aweber as an example in the case study. We use, in my business, I use Meropost. Uh, so it really doesn't matter what email service provider, what shopping cart you might be using now. What you'll find is that the methodology is platform agnostic, and we go through different technical uh, examples on how to, how to set all that up. Um, so Gabriel, I hope that answers your question. Um, the, survey uh, the survey funnel software is a separate uh, purchase. Um, if you want to do that, it's not mandatory. Um, it's, it's, it's optional. Um, people who have invested in the training have been asking about our next level mastermind. So after you invest in the training and you say, yes, I want to take advantage of this, this is the only thing that you have the option to purchase from me today. You cannot spend any more money with me today than $197. I will not take any more. Even if you say, Ryan, I'm ready to work with you. Uh, here's my $50,000 check. Let's get started. And the reason why is I want people to go through the methodology first so you can understand the process. Then from there, if you say, I get it, I'm ready to dive right in, I want to get access to your community of other business owners to see how they're implementing this so we can trade stories and connect with people and see other examples, well, you'll have the opportunity today to raise your hand and say, yes, I might be interested in this. Uh, and after you've gone through the training, then you'll have an opportunity to get in. That is a separate program. Um, it's, uh, it's not mandatory, but you will have the option to do that. And the reason why we do that is simple. It's sort of like if you've ever taken an upper level class in college or graduate school. You don't want to be a, a freshman in college and attend an upper level Dostoevsky literature class in Russian literature, uh, having never taken a class in college. You're going to step in and you're going to be lost. So what you do is you take your fundamentals first. You take Literature 101 or Russian Lit 101 or whatever it may be, and then you're prepared to be in that upper level group. And this is the 101. This teaches you the methodology so that way from there you can have a decision and say, I want to implement this myself. I want to work with you, Ryan, and your team to do this for me, or I want to become part of your community and uh, see how other people are doing this. And when you become part of that community, by the way, you do get access to my software for free. So you have a couple different options, but it's only after you've uh, decided to move forward with this training here today. Um, let's see. I, ju I just did the math, uh, Ryan, and the, to the, you know, the investment in the program that you're asking for, $197, is about the equivalent of maybe two orders in our business, two customer, two acquired customers and the net that we might get from that. Um, so if you if you look at it in terms of applying this to your business and the potential for bringing in thousands of leads a day, which um, you know we're we're in that category. I know you have other clients that are in that category, and converting though you know a good chunk of those into paying customers and then taking them up the you know I've been I've been teaching my students uh, the value of the back end. I call it the promised land. And everyone that's everyone that's a, a member of Health Profits knows that that's what we refer to it as, um, and the fact that you are uh, you've you've optimized that and taken taken that to the next level with your back end approach, um, it 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 really is. Uh, again, I'm flabbergasted at, at the investment, and uh, people probably are scratching their heads, thinking, you know, uh, waiting for the other shoe to drop. I think you've done a great job of explaining it. You have these higher end programs that. Well, it wouldn't make sense for people to step in right, uh, you know, immediately. But me having been a part of that, you, you know, having you as a, uh, as a as a consultant to our business, and having been to your mastermind and in your in your next level mastermind and your uh, your elite programs, those are all things I think you know people are going to self select, raise their hands uh, at the appropriate time, and they're going to get massive value from those, you know, when when those are made available when it's appropriate for them. But it does not diminish. The value of this program and what you put forth. You've not, it's not like you're holding anything back. Um, they're going to have everything they need to implement this process, which is just absolutely amazing. Right, right. I mean, it's, you know, you mentioned Jay Abraham um, at the beginning, and we, you know, Jay was at that dinner along with um, some, some pretty amazing people. And uh, anybody who studied under Jay or has studied Jay's work is familiar with the strategy of preeminence. Right, mm -hmm. which is just leading with your absolute best 
with little expectation in return. And I've learned that over the years that I'm actually, I'm not a very good business person, like I'm not a good, very good marketer. I'm very good at just, when I, when I give my absolute best, good things happen in return. Mm -hmm. And so that's the best way that I can describe it, is I just know that if, and, and you remember this from the, the elite event that we held in Austin, yeah. people ask me, they said, Ryan, you know, why are your clients and why is your team so loyal? to you? Why do they stick with you forever? And I said, I had to think about it for a second. I said, I don't know how to describe it other than that I just know that if I pour 100% of myself into whatever it is that I'm doing, that good things happen. And that's it. <laughs> it's, 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 there's no other way to explain it. That It's so inelegant, so basic and fundamental, but that's all it is. I just know when you pour 100% of yourself into something, good things happen. And, um, you know, I'm really this is, the, this is the kind of guy Ryan, Ryan is. I, I came up to him at the event that we were in Austin, and Ryan, I said, Ryan, I, I, I don't have my car here. I, I'm staying at an Airbnb down, you know, a couple miles down the road. Um, can I borrow your car? And, and without missing a beat, Ryan reaches into his pocket, throws me his car keys, and says, it's parked in slot 18 out the back parking lot, <laughs> and, and didn't even blink. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, this is the kind of guy Ryan is, and and why people are uh, love working with you. I love working with you, Ryan, and, and like I said, the quality of person that you are, uh, and the, uh, the the commitment that you give to your friends, your clients, um, and which th that's why I felt so good about um, having you deliver this workshop to these folks. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you for doing this. I'm uh, I, I I was here. I was actually writing writing notes on my whiteboard as you were talking, mm. and I, I even picked up a few nuggets out of this, even though That's you were cool. with us. That's awesome. So so I know we're kind of short on time. So so let's do this. I want to answer one or two more quick questions. I want to uh, deliver on a promise that we made at the beginning, and then um, we can kind of uh, uh, wrap things up. So. Um, the, the last question I want to address is what the, the software does. So people have been asking about the software and, and what technically do you need to do. Mm -hmm. So um, you can use uh, lead pages. You can use a program like ClickFunnels or 10-Minute Funnels or any of these funnel programs. In fact, I know some people, Buck, in your world are familiar with yes. Kyle Graham. And Kyle and I did a, a webinar yesterday talking about how our survey funnel software integrates seamlessly with 10-Minute Funnels. And um, technically, it's relatively simple. And I think you'd agree that the, the pages that we create are relatively basic. So it doesn't require a ton of coding or anything like that. You can, when you see the examples in the course, you'll see that, oh, this isn't that difficult. I can just go on Odesk or Elance and have someone kind of create something similar in either HTML or ClickFunnels or something like that. Now, as far as the software is concerned, we talk about those micro-commitment bucket surveys. Right, and asking all those questions one step at a time, using conditional logic to funnel people in different directions. So if you want to ask people, for example, say you're a, a, a trainer or, or maybe a physician, and it's relevant to know if someone's a man or a woman. And if they're a man, maybe the next question you might ask is, well, are you over or under the age of 40? And if they say over the age of 40, you might say, well, have you ever been told that you suffer from low T? Or have you ever been told that your testosterone levels are, are declining? Well, those questions might be relevant for a man over 40, and, but not relevant for a woman in her 30s. So the survey, question, survey software that uh, we talk about, survey funnel software, allows that conditional branching so you can branch down these paths. You can customize the questions that you ask people. You can pass that data forward. And this is what's beautiful. All those answers that you gather get pushed to that person's contact record in whatever email service provider that you're using. So you can use that data later on. You can segment the men from the women in your audience, the people who are over the age of 40 or under the age of 40, people who are looking to lose weight in their thighs rather than their belly. And the list goes on and on. It's only limited by your imagination. And this is something, again, that's so applicable in the health space because why? We're not one-size-fits-all creatures. Right? We all have differences. And to, uh, I didn't finish the, the story um, that I talked about. A few people asked, yes, I walked out of the hospital 10 days later in my 30s diagnosed as a juvenile diabetic, a type 1 diabetic. Now, I'm not the first person in history to be north of 30 to be diagnosed as a type 1 diabetic, but it's pretty rare. 
it's, it's pretty unusual. And we don't know what set it off. We don't know what triggered it. And that just go, it drives the point home that we as individuals have such unique biology and differences specifically with health that it makes sense to ask a few questions before you ultimately diagnose someone with the solution that you're thinking or prescribe the solution you're thinking about prescribing. So that's the one last question I want to answer and I want to deliver on the promise of that flow chart. So we talked at the beginning, I promised uh, to give away a high resolution copy of this flow chart if you're interested. If you go to surveyfunnelformula.com forward slash free, F-R-E-E, -E, we just put together a simple little form, go there, enter your name and email, and we'll shoot you an email with a, with a high resolution copy of this flow chart. And again, I've had people email me photos that they've, they've gone to Kinko, they've blown it up on their wall. <laughs> um, I've had people who send me photos of their computer, they use it as the, the background on their desktop because really, this is the guiding, the compass that guides what they're building in their business and it's so central to what they're doing. So um, if you'd like a copy, then all you need to do is go to that URL and you'll do that. So Buck, are there any other questions that we want to touch on or talk about or uh, should we um, leave with some just parting words? Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I just wanted to reiterate the importance of the mission that we are on, you are on, that we are on here in Health Profits and, and um, the impact that we can have in getting leverage and uh, using the survey funnel, funnel formula, it is a tool that can be used for great good and having an amazing impact uh, on a, a, a large population, on a, a large number of people's lives. And uh, your personal health, health uh, crisis that you just shared, thank you so much for sharing that. It just, you know, cements and reinforces the, story, the, the, the mission that I'm on and why I feel it's so important to uh, you know, to do, uh, develop high quality products, to wrap those with ethical marketing systems and get the message out there. And this is the kind of, this is the wave of the future. This is how it's going to be done. This is how more people are going to be, um, you know, they're, they're going to be pr uh, prescribed the right approach. They're going to be educated and convinced and they're going to, uh, their lives are going to be positively impacted as a result of, uh, of what you're doing here, Ryan. So I, I just want to say thank you so much for making this training available, whether people take advantage of your your very gracious offer or not, uh, they you know the workshop was incredibly valuable, and they can go and start implementing this stuff immediately, um, you know, to their businesses. And uh, I wanted to say thank you for being a friend and a coach to my business, and uh, the impact that it's already had on our on our business. So uh, thank you for that. And you know, with that, I'll you know, if you'd like to uh, close it off for us, I think uh, we have. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that not not. I know we're going to have a replay of this and, and be able to share this with folks that weren't able to be on the call. It's too bad that they they couldn't hear this live because it, it was that, that impactful. Buck, I want to say I want to say thank you to you. Um, I want to say thank you for everybody who's who's here. I know you know my, I treat my time my time is precious, and I look at you know stepping out of the hospital. I look at every minute as even more and more precious. Uh, my life expectancy isn't what it was before I stepped into the hospital. Uh, a little over three years ago, and um, and I and I have a new appreciation for time. So I just want to say thank you um, um, for spending the time with us. And I'll leave you with one parting thought. Don't try to decide with the information you have now if this is right for you or not without at least checking it out. I want you to remember that you have the opportunity today to check everything out for yourself before you even have to decide if you want to keep it. Meaning, you can go through the first four weeks of the course, read through all the transcripts, watch all the videos, go through it, try out the techniques, and if it works for you, then keep it. And if you decide for any reason or no reason at all that, you know what, it just isn't quite right for my business, well, that's cool. You know, I'm not doing this to to earn $197 of your money. I'm doing this to build a relationship that will hopefully last for many, many years to come. And if it turns out this isn't a fit for you, then that's totally fine. You just send a one-line email to Kimberly, let her know, she'll graciously refund your money, no questions asked, no hoops to jump through or anything like that. Um, but I would hate for you to miss out. And so that's why I just implore you to at least take the time to check it out See if this is something that you can use in your business to have the type of profound impact that it's having um, with business after business. And I hope you take the step to, to do that with, with me, and I look forward to taking that next step with you. So, Buck, thank you so much. Everybody, thank you, Ryan. Thank you.